I wanted to conquer America, and so he landed off through space-time and through the universe to land here, in this universe of After the End. I chose these islands off of Massachusetts and jumped in with my host who took over the islands. After packing, one of the first things we did was decide our plan of action, because of course we wanted to conquer this land, we wanted to make a name for ourselves, all of us seeked glory. And so, as the ruler of these people, well first I was gonna go for a strategy focus, thinking well I'm gonna go conquer, but since I'm gonna go conquer I need to exploit this land for all of its worth, so I decided to go for an authority focus, make people know I am the authority and they need to follow me. I chose a wife, you know, just one that knew what she was doing, no other particular reason, really, believe me. Then I hired some beautiful writers, from my native culture of course, some cowboys, some Chilean cowboys you could call them. And without any further hesitation, I gathered all of my men and told them we are going to Barnstable, we are going to the mainland. And so we landed off the coast of Barnstable. This little peninsula that we have here, I don't know, American geography is fucking weird. And there was nobody there when we arrived. And it was at this time as well when I got a, a herald telling me that my wife was pregnant. Easily enough, we captured the fort and then they just gave it all to us. No effort put into it whatsoever. Like any good father, I missed the birth of my firstborn daughter. Because I was out raiding, of course, I was given the option to name my daughter and so I named her after my wife. I thought it was a good idea, and it was. And because there's no time like the present, I attacked the chiefdom of Plymouth. They had a puny little defense force there, and because of course I am a masterful tactician, I defeated them immediately. It was no challenge at all. Quickly enough, I took over their fort and captured the chieftain of the place. Now, I decided to ransom him off, but then I still had his fort, so I won the war anyways. I kicked him out of his lands and robbed him of all his money. Which is a nice thing to do considering that I am gonna liberate all of these people from the stupid government that they were under. By this point one day I decided to sit under the stars and look up at them and see what they told me. You wanna know what they told me? That's right, they told me that people were gonna fucking backstab me and that they hated me. It's not like I'm paranoid or anything, it's true, it's what the stars told me. And so with Boston just a couple kilometers away from my borders, I decided to attack. Boston is the jewel of the area and I had to have it for myself. Now, the local tribes, they were very cheeky, they were very sneaky and they kept sneaking around me in order to avoid my army and try to guerrilla war for me, but I wasn't gonna allow that, so I just got them anyways and defeated them in battle. Their king was a fucking idiot. At one point they decided to invade my island and land there, but I just went back and defeated them anyways, and that got their king captured. But what I decided to do was to ransom him off, so that I could get the money. Maybe this was a mistake, because, well, you will see soon enough. And it was here when the peasants also rebelled, and I just killed them all. We have no space for rebellious peasants in my realm. I kept defeating this chieftain, battle after battle after battle. My men thrived over his corpses. And it was at this time as well where I once again missed the birth of one of my children because I was at war. But that's fine, war is more important. He was named Gabriel because he would be a mighty king one day. Now, at this point, for whatever reason, some raiders from who knows where helped this king and defeated me in battle. But it was one battle and then I just came back and defeated this dude anyways. And I got him captured again. So I just decided to tell him, you know what, just give me Boston and I will let you go. Immediately, well, the first thing I did was move my capital there. I decided to go on campaign up north, because the tribes were weak. But that's when I found a pair for my menagerie of friends that I was building. However, the coffers were running low, so I just decided to sell them all. It was sad, but you know, the war effort is more important. At this point, one of the strongest tribes in the area was in a weak and precarious position. So of course, I did what anyone in my position would have done, and I attacked them, to take their entire land. In one battle, I captured their heir, and so immediately he said, you know what, take it all, take all my lands. It makes a lot of sense, trust me. Immediately after, I went as after this chief test that was bordering me to take the coastline that rightfully belonged to me and me only. And now, just because I wanted more, more land, I declared war on a guy that had double the amount of my troops. Double my troops. 
Naturally, I lost. Again, and again, and again. Battle after battle was lost by my men. I was trying to deal more damage to him than he was dealing to me, but it was just not working out. And to top it all off, peasants decided to revolt at this time. However, my armies just happened to be in Boston at the time, so I just defeated them immediately and killed them all. I really, really, really tried with my battle genius to defeat them and make quick work of their big numbers, but it just wasn't working out. You know, I was fighting 2,000 versus like 5,000 men. Even though I was dealing damage, I was starting to lose much more than he was losing. And so, you know, I considered surrendering. I seriously did. But no, I would not surrender. I would win no matter what this war. I would find a way. And so that was when I remembered alliances exist. Immediately, I proceeded to marry off my children to get strong alliances. The chieftains were all aboard on this idea to come and help me, a great powerful man, win my war. Swiftly then, I called them all to war. The attrition men of the enemies could not bear the sight of such a powerful commander like me suddenly having the same amount of troops as them. And so, the enemy advance was halted, stopped right on his tracks. We marched onwards to the Appalachian Mountains, and just like that, with the help of my new men, we won our first battle in the war. And from then on onwards, we would swear to not lose any other battle again. In my attempt to halt their advance, we were ambushed at what is now known as the Battle of Lawrence. Slowly and in an almost disorganized fashion, my allies rushed to help me. We were able to come out victorious in the end, but sadly I was badly, badly wounded after this deathly battle. The campaign after that moved on swiftly. We were able to capture the few leftover forts that the enemy had, and eventually they capitulated, and we got the land. Now my realm was looking big, it was the dominant power in the region of New England. I realized that to be recognized as the sole kingdom of New England, I only would have to subjugate a few remaining tribes. I attacked one of my neighbors and took their land. Immediately, because no one else would contest my title, I was named King of the entirety of New England. The citizens of Boston were ecstatic over this, and parties were thrown all over the kingdom. One of the local chieftains was peacefully vassalized because my brightness, of course, forced him to come under my fold. And to celebrate, we went on another campaign up north to pacify and civilize those savages that live up north. The local chieftains and their men were no match for the armies of New England under the command of the one and only king, Carlo Celestius. It was a quick campaign and we took more chunks of land off of the hands of the locals. As part of the celebration, I decided to hold court and this woman came to me with, with an insane man telling me, yeah, you should make this man your court jester. Nothing bad will come out of it. And so I did. I made this insane man my court jester. It was as well during this event that you could call it a janissary of mine, a kid that I took from the enemies and raised by myself. He offered to, to pay me to get some land and he would build a castle in my kingdom. And so, of course, I thought it was super cool and told him, yeah, go be a lord of your own. While on campaign up north, a campaign that I won, of course, I got news that the kingdom of Upper Quebec was in civil war and so they were weak much weaker than I was. And because her queen was of another religion, she was evangelical and not whatever the fuck Quebec is normally. I decided to declare war for the entire kingdom, because the whole entirety of it would belong to me. My armies crossed the border and found little to no resistance. In quick time, my men and I were able to make quick work of the defenders, the meager defenders of Quebec. The fortifications on the countryside were no match for my siege weapons either. It was at this point that I decided to look up at the stars and saw that they told me that soon there would be a great battle and I should be prepared. Montreal was narrowly fortification and it would take years for my men to take it, but we would not give up. The men of Quebec were still out in the countryside and I decided to split off with some men to attack them. However, they caught me off guard and I was outnumbered, and so we were forced to retreat back to the siege. This defeat sent me into a dark mental state, 
and I became a drunkard. I tapped into my desire to drink and drink and drink. A man like me is not defeated twice in the same fashion, and so I took more men off the siege and encountered the enemy king in the battlefield. This time he was no match for the brutality of my men. We marched back into the siege with only a few months at most left before the enemies would surrender. I also drank a lot, of course. A masterful armor smith that I was patronizing delivered to me the Celestius scale armor. And eventually we took Montreal, the big city in this area. The enemy king would not yet surrender, so we had to chase him off into the countryside once again. He and his men were only pathetic shadows of the pathetic shadows they already were before we started picking them off. But alas, the enemy armies could not hold off my battle genius forever, and so they had to give up. And just like that, the entirety of Quebec, well not the entirety of it, but most of Quebec and the most important part, was mine. Montreal was kept to myself as a sort of winter vacation home, perhaps. It was a big and rich city, full of resources, much like Boston, my beloved capital. I continued the campaigns up north, because one day the entirety of America would be mine. They were easy pickings, as the local tribes were no match for me. I was preparing to attack Prince Edward Island, and that's precisely when I fucking died. Look, okay, this isn't canon. I didn't die. I... You know, I am an interuniversal, esoteric being. I cannot die, okay? It's not canon. I did not die. I... Let's just say I am... Um, I got bored. So I left. And I left my sons to uh, rule the kingdoms. And them being fucking useless idiots, they um, failed. They failed. Anyways, I didn't want to end the video like this. I wanted to reform their religion, have uh, the cult of Carlos Lestius, and then make a new hybrid culture. Um, none of that could work, and I couldn't go back because somehow it was Iron Man, even though I never told it to be Iron Man, so I didn't have a save to go back into and do the things I wanted to do. So yeah, fuck you. You don't get a nice ending. Fuck off and click off this video. Bye.